This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video I'm going to be making myself a dress from a vintage sewing pattern out of some vintage fabric. I recently picked up this Butterick sewing pattern, it's Butterick 6950 for 50 cents from an op shop which is what we call thrift shops here in Australia and I also found this beautiful vintage crepe fabric in the most lovely kind of mushroom shade with the cutest little floral design all over it. I think from memory I picked this up for about four dollars which is such a bargain and honestly it's one of the best fabric finds I have ever found from a thrift store and I've decided I'm going to combine these two together and make a really beautiful vintage inspired dress. The pattern has so many amazing details to it. It has this really unusual waistline which is something I have never really seen before where the waistline kind of goes up towards the bust like that and the dress also has this really scooped neckline which I'm not 100% sure if I'm sold on that or not. Today I only have enough fabric to do the mini version. Last time I had a go at a vintage sewing pattern I realized halfway through that half the pieces were missing so hopefully that won't happen again this time but yeah I think I'm gonna start by finding all the pieces that I need for this dress and then I will give them a quick press with my iron um, on a really light setting just to get all of the creases from being folded in the packet for the last few decades I suppose, so let's get started! So the dress apparently requires 2.5 meters of fabric. I have measured my fabric and I have only a little over two meters, so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go. There are a few things that I can potentially skip, like the cuff on the sleeve I could potentially leave out, and there's also some ties that you can tie up into a bow at the back, which Potentially will depend on the fit, but I could skip that as well. So yeah, I'm gonna lay out the pieces onto my fabric now and fingers crossed I have enough. Before cutting out the pattern, I decided to trace the shorter skirt version of the pattern just to be able to keep the skirt pattern nicely intact. Now while I cut out the pieces of this pattern, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and run your business. Squarespace is an amazing supporter of this channel and if you've been following along for a while then you'll know that I use Squarespace to run the Rosary Apparel website and online store and trust me they make creating and running a website so stress-free and easy. Whether you want to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, run a blog, or simply create any type of website, Squarespace have so many beautifully designed templates to choose from, you're sure to be able to find one that's perfect for you and your needs. Something I love about Squarespace is how easy they make it to customize the templates to make your dream website. Once you've selected a template, you can change everything from the fonts and colors, and they have these really easy to navigate drag and drop elements that you can add and remove things from the website really quickly with just a few clicks, no knowledge or background in coding needed whatsoever. So if you'd like to create a beautiful online presence of your own, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video.
Okay, so I'm happy to report that I managed to cut out all the pieces and I still have a little bit of fabric left. I've decided though to skip the cuff just because I don't love that style of sleeve at the moment. And I'm also going to skip the tie. And because this pattern doesn't have pockets, I'm going to cut out a few pockets from the leftover fabric instead. This is just my Rosary Apparel pocket template. It's free and I'll have a link to it down below if you want to put pockets in your garments as well. So yeah, I'm just so, so pleased I was able to get all of the pieces out in this fabric. And then once I've cut out the pockets, I can get on with making this dream dress. I also just cut out the facing pieces with some interfacing as well. I'm just using some fusible interfacing. I don't often use interfacing when I sew, mainly because I find it makes the garment a little bit too stiff. But because this is such lightweight fabric, I figured it'd probably be a good idea to use interfacing with this one, especially on the neckline. But yeah, I'm excited to get started and I'm gonna have a quick read of the instructions now to see what I have to start working on first. I was so confused. I was reading the instructions like, why on earth are there trousers? Like what is going on here? And then I realized it's instructions for a Vogue pattern. So it looks like the previous owner has just accidentally put the Vogue instructions into this pattern packet. Luckily, the instructions for this dress are in here as well, but I was like, whoa, why are there so many pages? That's part of the reason why I love working with vintage patterns because you sometimes just come across odd things like that. Um, I'm definitely going to be Googling that Vogue pattern later though because yeah, I wanna see it and maybe get my hands on it. So we're starting with the bodice by the looks of this and I have to start by trimming the interfacing I just cut a little bit and then basting it to the bodice front. And then I will also do the same for the bodice back. So yeah, that's where I'll start. I also have to put a couple of darts in the bodice front and the bodice back as well. I'm just about to sew the bodice backs to the bodice front and the back facings to the front facing. It says to do the side seams of the bodice at the same time, but I'm only going to do the shoulder to start with because I think it's going to be a lot easier to attach the facing if only the shoulders are attached. And something I have to try and remember while making this dress is the seam allowance is 15 millimeters, which is one and a half centimeters which is actually quite big and I'm used to doing a seam allowance of about one centimetre so yeah I'll have to keep that in mind as I stitch this dress up.
Okay, so I've just pinned the facing to the bodice and according to the instructions, I need to stitch it in place and then I will flip it out and then do an under stitching to stop the facing from turning right side out, if that makes sense. I usually just top stitch when I do the facings because I'm lazy, but I actually don't have a cotton that is perfectly matched to this fabric. So I am gonna put the effort in and under stitch the facing instead. And hopefully, yeah, that will do the trick and it will sit nicely on the inside of the dress. a little look at what it's looking like so far. I have to say I'm actually loving the scoop neck. I'm so glad I decided to do it. It's just gonna be something a little bit different that I don't have anything quite like in my wardrobe currently. And I'm also very intrigued by this waistline because like my bust finishes right where that point is, which it's gonna be interesting, that's for sure, but I'm excited. I think it's going to be such a cool feature to the dress. But yeah, I'm really happy with it so far and it is coming together nice and quickly as well, which is always a good thing. And now it is time to start working on the sleeves. So like I said, I'm going to skip the cuffs and instead I'm thinking I'll just put a bit of elastic into the bottom hem of the sleeve to still create a really cute puffiness. But yeah, I just feel like the cuff is just a little bit too, I don't know, kind of formal, I guess, for this style of dress. So yeah, I'm gonna make it a little bit more relaxed with just a bit of elastic in the sleeve. I love sewing with vintage sewing patterns so much. I actually have a whole old picnic basket filled to the brim with vintage sewing patterns and I'm kind of slowly working my way through them, which is exciting. I just find them really relaxing and I like to just take my time and actually follow a pattern because normally I kind of just make patterns up as I go or base them off some of my own sewing patterns. So yeah, making these vintage sewing pattern videos are some of my all time favorite videos to make. I just find it really creatively fulfilling and I get all inspired with new ideas as well because vintage patterns have some really unique details to them. Okay, slight change of plans. Um, because crepe fabric is so difficult to iron and because of the shape of the sleeve, hemming it <laughs> didn't go very well. I decided to just stitch through it because I thought if I was gathering it up with elastic, you won't be able to notice it, but I'm just not happy with it. So I'm going to unpick it and instead I'm going to overlock the raw edge of the sleeve and then gather it up by doing a few rows of shirring. I know I do shared sleeves all the time, but that's just because I genuinely love them so much and I find it such an easy way to gather up the end of a sleeve to create a really nice amount of puffiness. So yeah, that is what I'm going to do with my sleeves. <laughs>
sleeves are done and they are looking absolutely adorable. So I just overlocked the raw edge and that made it easier to just hem one single layer instead of having to double it over twice. And then I stitched three rows of sharing elastic onto the ends of the sleeves which have just gathered them up nicely. And yeah, I think this style of sleeve just suits this fabric so much. I'm really happy I decided to unpick it and do the sharing instead. So now I have to gather up the top of the sleeves and that will make it easier to ease the sleeves into the bodice armholes and will also give it a bit of extra puffiness at the top of the sleeve as well. Okay, so I have just tried it on so far. Just kind of put a skirt on and sorry, you can see a little bit of my bra there, but it is looking so adorable. I'm obsessed with the scooped neck. I love it way more than I thought I would. And these cute little shirt sleeves are just, oh, so perfect for this dress. I can't get over how cute they look. I was thinking I might have to add a little bit of like a padding to the sleeve just to make the puffiness stay up, but I actually think this fabric handles it pretty well as it is. So I'm gonna leave it for now, but yeah, super, super happy with it so far. The skirt is made up of four different panels of fabric and by the looks of it, we just sew the two fronts together and then sew the backs to the front. I have to remember as well to put my <laughs> pockets in when I get to this step. Uh, usually I do around 10 centimeters down the skirt. I will just have to lie the skirt up against my waist and see if that feels comfortable. But either way, yeah, the pockets will be going in before I stitch the backs onto the front. Okay, now for the moment I've been waiting for all day, attaching the skirt to the bodice. Okay, so I have just attached the skirt. I haven't put the zip in or anything, I just, dodgily pinned it at the back so it's not perfect but I think it gives a really good look at how the finished dress is going to look. The waistline is actually really subtle. Unless you knew it was there I don't think you'd notice it um, especially once I've pressed these bits but I'm in love with how this is looking. I love it even more than I thought I would. I've also included the pockets which I don't know, I kind of a little bit lower than I usually would go. I thought because the um, seam allowance was so much, it would bring it up a bit more, but that's okay, I can live with that. And then the skirt is actually quite long as well. It's at my knees currently, um, and I definitely want it to be more of a mini dress, so I'll be taking up the hem quite a bit. But yeah, I'm really impressed with how quickly this dress has come together. I started sewing at around 10 o'clock this morning, and it's now just not quite three o'clock in the afternoon. So I think that's pretty quick for a solid five hours. Obviously filming does take up quite a bit of time as well. So yeah, very happy with how quick this one has come together. I'm actually gonna see if I can get it completely finished today. I had planned to make it over two days, but I think I can put the zip in and hem it pretty quickly. I'm also really impressed with the fit as well. I luckily somehow managed to pick up that vintage pattern in exactly my size. It only had one size in the packet and yeah, it just so happens to be perfect for me. So yeah, I think it was meant to be.
Okay, so I have taken about 10 centimeters off the bottom of the dress. I started cutting it and then I realized it would be much easier if I just cut it with my overlocker and that way the edge is nice and neat as well. So yeah, now I'm just going to hem it and then I will try it on again and see how it looks. And it's finished. I'm in love with it. I think it is the most adorable little dress. I'll pop some footage of me wearing it now so you can get a good look at what it looks like. I am so, so happy with how this dress has turned out. I'm so in love with the scoop neck and so happy that I decided to go ahead and do it because I almost was tempted to make another kind of high neck dress because that's usually what I prefer to wear. But it goes to show when you try something different, you might surprise yourself. I just think it suits this style of dress so much. I also love the puffy sleeves and I also love the mini length of this dress as well. I think it's just so adorable. I do wish that I had put the pockets up a little bit higher though. They just sit a little bit low, like it doesn't feel natural to put your hands down that low into a pocket. So that is something I'll keep in mind if I am to make this dress again, particularly if I make the longer version, which I definitely plan to do. That's really the only thing I would change if I was to redo it. And that has nothing to do with the pattern. That was my own silly mistake. So yeah, very impressed with this vintage pattern. I still can't get over how well it fits me. And I'm really excited to have a go at making this dress in a more structured fabric, like a linen. I think that could turn out really, really cool. If you enjoyed this video, then I would love it if you could give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.